This woman claims Dream was stalking her house. This is her story. As this thriller begins, we're greeted by a canopy of pine trees in an isolated forest because this plot wouldn't make sense in a city. Meet Maddie. She's very deaf, but at the very least, she can cook. We watch as she slices, cuts, dices, and sautés while carefully following a recipe. Ugh, I suck at this. Same, that's why I stick to ramen. As she cooks, Maddie receives a text message from her neighbor Sarah, asking her if she can drop by. Maddie's MacBook is running low, so she walks away, charges it, and responds with her phone instead. Oh, and the oven? We'll just forget about that for now. Sarah pulls up, and the pair chat. Though Maddie's deaf, she's an adept lip reader. Nonetheless, Sarah continues her poor attempt at sign language. Hey, at least she's trying. Anyway, they talk about Maddie's book. It's so good, the ending is straight bussing, as the kids say. Thank you, my mom says I have writer's brain. I got all these voices in my head. Actually, that's called schizophrenia. Hey, remember the oven? Uh-oh. The pair head back inside and confront what appears to be a whole ass seizure inducer. As the alarm blares, Sarah can do nothing but stand shook. Oh, those giant windows? Aesthetics only. They don't open. Why would they? Who needs fresh air? Maddie goes on to explain that she requires the alarm to be loud so that the vibrations can trick her into thinking someone's touching her. Seriously, it gets really lonely out in the woods. After the alarm is settled with, they chat some more. Sarah invites her over for dinner at her place, but Maddie declines, opting to have sleep for dinner instead. As Sarah leaves, Maddie receives a text from her ex, which is a funny rhyme, but that's about all I can come up with. Maddie returns inside and looks over her mess before we catch a glimpse of her book, Midnight Mass. In the book's description, we learn that Maddie became deaf and mute at 13 after contracting Ligma. We cut to her munching on some microwave dinner while working on the ending of her next book. Wait, what? Seven endings? Girl, make up your damn mind. Unfortunately, she can't. In the writing biz, of which I'm an esteemed member, we call that writer's block. You've probably never heard of it. Anyway, seeking a distraction, she FaceTimes Craig, her ex, only to hang up shortly after. Ah, screw it, let's call him again. Okay, here we go. Ah, okay, she's one of those. Alrighty then, let's just clean the dishes. Okay, this is nice and calming. <laughs> Suddenly, Sarah slams into the window and calls for help. Though, on top of being deaf, mute, and unable to cook, Maddie is now apparently blind. Shortly after, an expertly placed bow shot lands on Sarah. Then, the masked Minecraft enthusiast pulls up. Wait, dream? I guess the secret to YouTube success is sacrifices. Just not the kind I was thinking of. <coughs> Sarah slumps over as Dream turns his sights towards Maddie. Oh wait, can she not hear me? I can't wait to tell Sapnap about this. Somehow, Maddie's peripheral vision is still on leave. By the time she looks out the window, he's gone. Then... Ugh, Craig, don't you know that calling you means I don't want to talk to you? Instead, Maddie opts to work on her book. Or whatever this is. Meanwhile, Dream slips in through a conveniently open door and does a tippy-tappy. But before he can complete his mission... Hey, Squish. Weird nickname, but okay. Maddie proceeds to explain in sign language that she's very happy. In the background, Dream snatches her phone. Um, who is that? Oh, probably the cat. The chat concludes and Maddie searches for her feline friend. Eh, guess it was a ghost. Back to work. Not so fast. Maddie starts receiving messages of herself. Uh-oh. She spots an open door and inches towards it. Then she spots him, just standing there, menacingly. Hello? Maddie locks it just in time, but Dream heads for the next door. This whole house is basically a giant window, bro. Just smash it. Maddie rushes to hit up 911 on her computer, but Dream heads out back to disable the house's redstone. Then, he teases her by the window and makes our ears bleed. Ah, my ears. Next up, he pays a visit to her car and makes some adjustments. Ugh, can this not get any worse? In an effort to get her weird stalker to leave her alone, she grabs some lipstick and leaves a note on the window. Didn't see your face, don't care, boyfriend coming home soon. Then, the unthinkable happens. Dream removes his mask, and we find that a beta male lies beneath. I'm not surprised. Can you read my lips? Maddie doesn't respond, and the lack of female attention causes him to lash out. Please respond. Maddie nods her head. Then, he proceeds to issue a challenge. Whoever survives the longest is the winner. Basically, because this needs to be at least an hour long, he's gonna wait around until Maddie's begging for it. Death, that is. Enjoy it. Ah, uh, why did I say that? I could have said something so much cooler. Now that he's gone, Maddie takes a moment to have a panic attack. Though, she quickly composes herself and reaches for some tools. A pickaxe, I mean hammer, and a knife. Look at her, dual wielding and shit. 
pro gamer move. She slowly patrols her house before making her way to her bedroom where she cowers beneath the window. Out of nowhere, someone knocks on the glass. Oh, thank God, it's just Sarah. <laughs> Never mind. Maddie backs up in fear, dropping the hammer in the process. Then, she collapses before spawning a bright idea. She reaches into her bag to retrieve her car keys and slithers outside to trigger her car alarm. Oh crap! While he tends to the car going brrrr, Maddie runs back upstairs in the hopes of retrieving Sarah's phone. She smacks Sarah's bum around, but for the life of her, can't find the darn phone. Suddenly, Dream appears and lunges at Maddie. However, Ha! <laughs> got your lump stupid looking ass. Though, not for long. Dream begins to overpower Maddie before she reaches for the hammer she conveniently dropped earlier. He screams in agony, but somehow quickly recovers despite having a freaking hammer embedded in his arm. Apparently, a makeshift tourniquet is only needs to return to his full power. Then, he teases Maddie with Sarah's phone before taking one of her earrings as a trophy. That totally won't become an issue later. He turns back towards the window, but Maddie is no longer paying him any mind. He angrily bangs away as she walks away, completely tired of his shit. Dream circles the perimeter of the house while Maddie hides, just barely evading his gaze. Then, a window of opportunity emerges. Maddie sneaks out and heads, oh shit. As the beta approaches, Maddie hides under the patio, cleverly using her hand to sense his vibrations. Mm, yep, definitely feel vibrations. Then, Maddie summons all her courage and takes off in a sprint. Wait, did you just hear that? While Dream reloads, Maddie starts running straight at him at full speed. Just kidding, she goes back inside and nearly avoids a... Hi, please leave me alone. Okay. Anyway, Maddie heads back upstairs and hatches another plan. This time, she grabs a flashlight and tosses it outside to cause a distraction. Highly effective. Or not. Maddie screams in silence. Like literally, she doesn't make a sound. Then, she has herself a peek. Hello? Damn, that was some Matrix shit. Dream decides to climb up to greet her and inexplicably hands her his bow. Nice one, doofus. Maddie heads back inside, now equipped with the bow, and Dream is once again on her tail. He stares at her sensually before deciding to wander off for a break. In dire need of medical attention, Maddie stumbles to the bathroom and tends to her wound. She's losing a lot of blood, but gets it somewhat under control, for now. Then, she turns her attention to the bow, which ends up being a lot harder to reload than anticipated. Not so easy, is it? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Suddenly, Sarah's boyfriend, John, pulls up. FBI on the ground, drop it! Don't tase me, bro! Dream poses as a cop, and John actually falls for it. To be fair, he is shook. He submits and gives up his phone and wallet. So, what happened here? I got a call, and when I showed up, this huge dude tackled me. I just woke up. Worst cover story ever, bro. Then, Dream returns John's phone, but drops Sarah's earrings in the process. John spots it, and is now very much on edge, but he maintains his composure to continue playing along. So, who made the call, cause the lady who lives here is deaf and mute? Huh. Meanwhile, Maddie is still in the bathroom. Come on, Maddie, push, push. Ah, no dice. Back to the boys. So deaf mute, huh? Yes. John mentions that there's a spare key just under the stairs. As they head towards the spot, he arms himself with a rock. Just as he's about to make his move, he spots Maddie. Easy, big guy, easy. Start. As John bleeds out, Dream remarks how big an alpha John is. There's no way I could have taken you in a fight. Thankfully, Maddie came in clutch. Of course, he had to cheat to get an advantage. Typical. John would have definitely clapped his cheeks. In fact, he still can. Somehow, John manages to snatch his neck and locks in a rear naked choke. And what does Maddie do? Absolutely nothing. Come on, Maddie, he's screwed. Look, he's even trying to tap out like this is the UFC. Okay, Minute Movies, I hear you. She heads outside, but gets rocked immediately. Just kidding, she was hallucinating. Unfortunately, the opportunity has now passed as Dream has recovered from his near-death experience. This man's plot armor is just too powerful. Back inside, Maddie's writer brain kicks in as she contemplates all the possible endings of her story. She can't fight. She can't hide. And we've already established that she can't cook. That leaves one possible ending. One he won't expect. Kill him. Outside, Dream enjoys a ciggy while chatting with John's corpse. Quite the night we're having, huh, John? Yep. Then, Maddie's kitty cat pulls up. Aw, so cute. Dream pets it and creepily states that she's gonna meet her mother soon. Let's go! Maddie lands a critical hit, but my man instantly recovers from the shot and charges towards her. As she runs off, she drops the arrow and reaches for it through the door. Ooh, bad idea. Gotcha now, b. Oof, he got her bad, bros. 
Maddie screams in silence but quickly composes herself before flashing a feisty look at Dream. Using her blood, she writes coward on the mirror. Okay, bet. Dream walks off as Maddie stumbles towards her laptop. She writes down his physical details, dorky, weird, creepy, while he attempts to bust down the window, something he's apparently incapable of. In a final effort to ensure her survival, Maddie sneaks off to hide in the bathroom. As she sits staring at the door, knife ready, Dream sneaks in from behind. He savors the moment and breathes out a sigh of satisfaction, a breath that Maddie detects. In slow motion, she exacts her revenge. Wait, what are you doing? Finish the job. Instead, she runs to the kitchen and collapses from blood loss. You suck. Ooh, she got him good. And she's got another trick up her sleeve. The seizure inducer from earlier comes in clutch. It overwhelms his senses, but he ultimately overpowers her. He starts choking her, but the joke's on him. She's into that sort of thing. Feeling inspired, she reaches out for a conveniently placed, whatever this is called, and... <laughs> then, she calls the police and her blood loss reverses itself. She goes outside to chill with her kitty cat while waiting. The end. And rip in peace to dream.